I have always been a massive fan of the publisher Microprose, and I was totally gutted when they closed their doors many years ago. I think I was also one of the very first people to contact them and welcome them back when they returned some two or three years ago, whenever it was. And I have to say that the vast majority of the titles that they have released since then have been excellent, really putting to shame many AAA titles. So Microprose have just announced their association with Combat Air Patrol 2, which places itself somewhere between a complex DCS-style uh, flight sim and an arcade equivalent. It boasts a number of aircraft as default, it has a number of different locations you can fly in, a dynamic mission generator, and it supports VR. Combat Air Patrol 2 appears to be developed by just one single developer called Ed Seo, but on the face of it, this seems ideal for Microprose. Now, as I admit, I am a huge Microprose fan, and I have enormous amounts of respect for them. I'm also a massive supporter of indie developers, I try to showcase as many indie dev games as I can on my channel. I've also been a sim flyer for most of my life, but the vast majority of that, I have to admit, has been GA aircraft. And yet, despite my lack of combat aircraft experience, I did immediately turn all of the settings in Cap 2 to maximum realism, and I jumped into Combat Air Patrol 2 expecting, and indeed needing, some guidance and tutorials in order to get me up to speed. But, if I'm honest, so much of Combat Air Patrol 2 appears to be non-operandi. To be clear, this is an EA title that launched on Steam in 2016, some eight years ago, but it hasn't seen an update since March 2021, so I'm starting to wonder, have Microprose made a terrible mistake here? Perhaps they see something in this game that I simply cannot. Before I made this review, I provided feedback to the developer based on my initial findings, and some changes have been included in the most recent patch. But I've come back and I'm looking at this again, and I still see that after the update, I just feel like so much has to be fixed before new content can be even considered a worthwhile addition. The only logical way I can think I can make this first look review is to just list all of the issues that I encountered and give it six months or so and see if they're fixed. Let's begin with the UI. The UI is horrible to look at and it's horrible to work with. All options are on the screen at all times, and the main menu scrolls both vertically and horizontally, which in the UI design industry is considered a massive faux pas. Initially, the UI background has video clips on it, and when you're trying to set up your keybinds and stuff, this made it a real ache on the eyes, so the developer has, in the latest patch, darkened the background to make it a little bit easier for people to see. In VR, the UI actually does seem a little bit better. It seems more akin with VR than it does on a normal screen. But then navigating the settings, etc., becomes a VR nightmare as well. So even, even there, it's not a pleasant experience. Furthermore, and there is very little guidance to showcase this, if you don't create and then select a pilot, some of the options in the UI, the main menu, are not actually visible. And whilst I can understand why it doesn't default to your previous pilot every single time, it is an annoyance that need not be there at all. Let's talk about the tutorials, if you can call them tutorials. Basic, I think, is too complimentary a term for the tutorials in this game. Other than a few lines of text in the top right hand corner, there is no guidance whatsoever. So effectively, rather than tutorials, what you're going to end up doing is trying to fly the missions. And as I mentioned before, if you don't select a pilot, then some of the missions don't actually show up. Mission number one out of, I think, 32, 33 or 34 or 35 missions in total is to take off. It's a simple take off mission. The instructions, as mentioned, are vague. Uh, up in the top right hand corner, for example, it says set nozzle angle, but it doesn't tell you what degree to set it to. And then occasionally the guidance just vanishes altogether, just disappears off the screen. Now, I've already alerted the dev to the fact that the flap inputs don't work properly, and they still don't work because I've tested them. And as a result, I was unable to complete that first mission for quite a while, because even though I was sat in the cockpit and deploying my flaps, the flaps do not actually deploy. Now, there are, other, there are other keybind options that you can switch to, which do work, but, as showcased here, even though the flaps are moving between stall and uh, crew settings, uh, I would need a third keybind in order to set them to neutral, or automatic, as it's called. But you'll notice that if you're inside the cockpit, 
the switch for the flaps doesn't actually work when you do it this way. So there's no visual indicator inside the aircraft, so I have to keep going outside of the plane to see if my flaps are up or down or in neutral. But that's not where the problems end. Even if you do complete the mission successfully, it doesn't register the fact that you have completed the mission, and thus it does not unlock mission number two. So you can never, ever, ever get past mission number one. Now, most of the other missions available in the game, which are hidden in amongst all of the coming soon carrot on the stick uh, options that you see, they don't actually work properly either. I tried to do some practice air-to-air uh, uh, -air combat, but the AI drones I'm meant to be shooting down just immediately commit suicide into the sea. The same when I tried to do air-to-air -air refueling, the tanker just dives into the ground until it explodes. I chased it down as far as I could, but it's just broken, clearly. Now, pretty much every mission begins the same way, with your aircraft configured to crash dive into the ground. And none of the missions I tried actually worked properly, except for the landing mission. Now, I'm no Harrier Jumpjet expert, but I do believe that this aircraft is overloaded. The precision required for you to hover seems extraordinarily difficult. Maybe it just is. But for beginners, you would expect something more simple. Perhaps a stall landing practice before trying to land on a ship. Just basically taking off from terra firma flying a hundred yards in a particular direction and then landing again something like that to get some practice in but it doesn't seem to work and there's no information explaining how the nozzle works in terms of angle so 90 percent you would think maybe isn't completely vertical but 90 percent is slightly off uh, a vertical angle and because the throttle um, because the nozzle has been mounted in such a way if you put it at a hundred percent it's actually going to make you go slightly backwards so none of that is explained in the game at all, but honestly, it doesn't feel like it flies that way anyway. Now when you're landing and you're using an awful lot of RPM and an awful lot of jets, you, you don't want the engine to overheat, you don't want it to over rev because it's just going to blow up on you and you're going to have problems. So you're supposed to be able to use water jets. Now water jets, there's a key bind for it, but there's no indication in the cockpit that I could see to tell you whether or not it's working or not. Incidentally, there are no RPM or engine overheating issues on the HUD, so I don't think any of that is actually modelled. Equally, and I apologise to keep going on here, if the aircraft is overloaded, I couldn't find any way to jettison water, jettison fuel, or jettison any of the uh, weapons that are on the plane. So, in essence, if you're overweight in this aircraft, you're, you're stuck. You cannot do a stall landing properly. I mean, I did manage to get it down, but my god, I had to work for it. This seems like a good opportunity or a good time to discuss the flight model, the physics, and the AI. And in order to showcase all of this, I have just one clip which explains it all. I set mission number one, which is the takeoff mission, to have maximum wind and turbulence to see how well the aircraft behaves. And you can see how my aircraft behaves immediately, and then you can see how well the AI aircraft manages to take off despite all of the issues that I am experiencing. So here I am, immediately getting blown backwards and across the deck. Now, there's nothing I can do about that. I've got my brakes on. Despite using the throttle, maximum rudder and wheel turn, I could not get this aircraft to turn back onto the centre spot. But, as you can see, the AI did a much better job than I did. That is Cap 2, in a nutshell. Let's discuss environments. They claim to be accurate land masses. I cannot vouch for that, I cannot deny it. Let's say, okay, they are accurate. Well, in that case, there are quite a lot of areas to choose from, and they seem to be quite large. They're certainly not up to Microsoft Flight Simulator standard, but then, who is? Dated, I think is the appropriate term here. And obviously, I've, I've tested some stuff out. Collisions with trees are simply non-existent. The same with buildings, as you can see here when I tried to land on this particular building. And I think that's a good segue as well to start talking about the other aircraft that are currently on offer. None of them, with exception for the Harrier, even have cockpit dashboards. Some of them don't even appear to fly properly, and that's hardly surprising given what I've shown you already about the flight model. On some occasions, the aircraft I picked was not actually the aircraft that I ended up flying, so there are some bugs there. At least we do have VR, but when I tried VR, the experience was riddled with bugs and issues. At first, my HOTAS worked in VR, but then my arms got involved in the game. And when using my hands, it was way too easy to accidentally flip switches and change settings without actually intending to do so. And whilst trying to fly the plane in VR mode, basically gripping a virtual joystick, I found it incredibly difficult. 
and a very stressful experience. I'm sure there are people out there who like to fly like this. I am certainly not one of them. The worst thing was, though, when I turned my VR hands off, hoping that I could once again use my HOTAS in VR mode, my arms were still there, and they were flinging about all over the place, and my HOTAS simply did not work. In fact, despite numerous attempts to make it work, I never did manage to get it to work again in VR. My HOTAS in VR just simply has stopped working, and I can't get it to work. Now, there has been an update to the VR to fix the arms flinging about when you turn them off, so I'm hoping uh, that has fixed the HOTAS issue as well, but I honestly... Honestly, I can't be bothered to test it because I've already put so many hours into this game and these are all the problems I'm finding. Let's say the last big mission, the last big issue that I want to bring up is that the, and this is probably the main selling point of the game, is the fact that it has a dynamic mission generator similar to Falcon 4.0, which again is a microprose title. Now that one I can get behind and I understand and I respect it and I appreciate that because I think there's a real opportunity there to produce a fantastic game. Um, Whilst the dynamic mission generation sounds great, there are no guides, no tutorials, or existing in-game pre-created missions for you to test out and try, and then try and figure out yourself perhaps and learn how to use the tool. There's nothing at all. I guess you're expected to just sink hour upon hour creating missions yourselves and try and figure out how it all works and what all the buttons do. So I've got to raise the question, what is it you're actually paying for here? Because most of it in fact, there's more coming soon stuff in this game than there is existing stuff. And there are numerous other issues in Cap 2, which I haven't even bothered to mention yet. Let's say, let's mention its inability to stay in full screen mode. No matter how many times I swap it to full screen, it keeps swapping back to window. Or the fact that it never remembers who the last pilot was. It doesn't upgrade, uh, it doesn't register missions, so you can't actually progress. Um, so you have to select your pilot every single time. And whilst on the most part, and whilst on the most part, controller support seems to be acceptable, if a controller is not plugged in before the game starts, it's simply not recognised. Nor do some of the keybind inputs work as intended. And the flight model is very questionable, especially in all the aircraft other than the Harrier. And the Harrier, when it's in hover mode, questionable at best. Even how the HUD seems to be out of alignment, regardless of whether you're in VR mode or normal display mode, you just you cannot seem to see all of the HUD. There's no rain in the game at all, or cockpit effects when you're flying through crowd, clouds or anything like that. Now you have to say that this uh, this game is built using FMOD, which is a very, very old um, bit of software, and it's, it's very dated, and I think the only real chance for this game is to be transported over to something else. Unreal Engine, Unity, I don't know what. But I can't see how this game can really deliver anything that's in any way close to any of the other games, even that Microprose offer in this realm, they seem to have saturated their own industry, which I, I find quite confusing. One last thing I'll mention is that the hat switch on my uh, joystick, which I usually use to look around if I don't have my head tracking turned on or if I'm not in VR mode, that doesn't work at all. Completely doesn't recognise it. So I really, really tried to give this title an extra fair crack of the whip. I even gave the developer time to fix some of the issues that I discovered and passed over. But Microprose, as much as I like, trust and respect you, what is it about Combat Air Patrol 2 that inspired you to take it under your wing, if you forgive the, uh, the joke there? Right now, this game feels like very early alpha, and there is so much that needs to improve and change before it's even worthwhile putting any more content in. This game is nearly 10 years old, and it barely feels like it's had any development time at all. It looks and feels completely broken. We need to see proper tutorials for each of the aircraft, and we need to see a tutorial or guidance system for the mission generator. We need to see in-game missions available for players to test out, experience and play, and showcase all that the game has to offer, because right now it simply doesn't. The bugs and the lack of features that need to be addressed are just growing in scale. The more I play it, the more bugs and issues I find. Like uh, when I'm flying against AI and I'm trying to shoot them out of the sky and they're just flying straight into the nearest mountain. It's, it's silly. I genuinely do not know what it is I'm meant to be showcasing to you here. I've seen other content creators do their utmost to show off what Combat Air Patrol 2 is capable of, but honestly, having watched their videos and having played the game myself, I think that those videos are disingenuous at best. And they've, to do so, um, this game is just bare bones. And they've 
basically ignored all of the issues to try and showcase something good to you. And I don't think that that's honest. Uh, that's just marketing. They're trying to entice you to buy something that is completely broken. And I think that's pretty immoral. My personal hope is that the developer is capable of devoting enough time into this and is capable of prioritizing the most important element to quickly turn this title around to something that is worthy of note. Because right now, the best thing I could say about this game is that Micropros are involved in it. <coughs> and for the first time in my life, I have to say that that alone is not enough. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Till next time, take care. Goodbye for now. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be.